Hey, it's Neville Medora here, and I want to talk to you today about advertorials. So we're going to talk about what they are, how to make them, how to think about them, and then we're going to go through some examples and then even make our own advertorial. Now, first of all, an advertorial is an advertisement disguised as a regular piece of content. And this is totally taking over the media industry because most people don't trust straight up advertisements, but they do trust editorial articles that maybe mention a company in a positive light. So an advertorial is an advertisement plus editorial content combined into one. So an advertorial is a semi sneaky way of writing your own advertisement into the trusted reputation of a publication like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, Time Magazine, or Buzzfeed. However, simply slapping some of these advertisements onto a publication isn't good enough. People tend to gloss over blatant advertisements. Rather, you want to make an advertorial that is 70% good content and mix it with about 30% promotion of your own product. Now, let's talk about the mindset of an advertorial. This is not a simple advertisement promoting your product. In fact, for an advertorial, you have to be in a giving mindset. You see, if you're going to pay for an advertorial, you want those advertising dollars to go a long way. And to do that, you need people to like your article. You need people to engage with your article. You need people to share your article. And most people don't like, engage, or share with just plain old advertisements. So you don't want to be spammy Sarah who just throws in a blatant advertisement nobody likes because no one's going to like that. No one's going to engage with that. No one's going to share that. You want to be more like Giving Gary who gives awesome content and slightly blends in the advertisement into the editorial content. Giving Gary strives to give even better information than the actual publication gives. That's why everyone likes his stuff. While he also mentions his product in the advertorial, no one minds because he sticks to the 70% great content rule and 30% sales pitch. So remember, for a good advertorial, make it 70% awesome free content and 30% sales. In fact, at AppSumo, we would send out tech deals to over 750,000 people per day. And people love them because we didn't just try to sell them something. No one wants to open blatant promotions in their email every day. Instead, we would craft a great story or how to around the product. This meant 70% of the article would be about the benefits of the product, how to use the product and other cool features it has whenever you buy it. But less than 30% of the article would be pitching the actual deal. So you can actually see the 70-30 ratio here on a sample app sumo deal. So less than 30% of the time on this deal was spent trying to sell. This actually gets far more engagement than if we just said, buy this, buy this, buy this for the whole email. And also people would just unsubscribe right away. And because this is actually an interesting read and helpful for people, people are far more likely to share the article, read the article the whole way through and buy the deal. So let's go through a couple of examples of big companies with advertorials on their site. Look at this article on Forbes about should you accept your employer's pension buyout offer? It looks like a normal article, right? But if you look really closely, you'll notice that it's sponsored by Fidelity. Now let's take a wild guess and assume that Fidelity is going to be mentioned really well in this article. Now, most people will read this article as if it's a normal article, but then it'll also have fidelity somewhere inside there. So they are far more likely to share or like this article than if it was just a blatant promo for fidelity. Look at this article in Buzzfeed. It's called 15 things you didn't know about 15 captains, commanders, and conquerors. Well, let's take another closer look at that. And guess what? It is sponsored by captain Morgan, the liquor company. So it looks like our old friend Captain Morgan here may have paid a little cash to Buzzfeed to sponsor this post and drive some traffic to their YouTube page. Well played, Captain. This is a good example of a great advertorial. That's a fun editorial piece of content, but is also an advertisement. This one actually made me laugh. It was an article in the Huffington Post about how Skynet is more realistic than you think. Remember Skynet from the Terminator movies? Well, I was reading this and kind of noticed that, wait a second, this is presented by Terminator Genesis, the movie. So this was a great advertorial that got in front of a non-traditional article 
for promoting the Terminator movie. Now, advertorials, since their editorial content, don't only do favorable pieces of content. In fact, check this one out. On Thrillist, they put out an article called Worst Office Lunches Ever, and what do you know? It's sponsored by Friday's, the restaurant. Now, let's take a wild guess and assume that Friday's might be featured as a great place to eat in this article, even though the article is about 13 worst office lunches ever. The reason this is a good advertorial is because no one's just going to share an article about how great Friday's is to eat at, but the 13 worst office lunches ever, now that's a fun article to share with people you work with. Now, sometimes advertorials aren't as direct and they're kind of loosely related to the article. Check out this one. Even the satire magazine slash website, The Onion, is in on the advertorial game or sponsored content as it's often called. Here's an article about productivity sponsored by Starbucks, who happens to sell a lot of productivity juice worldwide. So even in a satire article about productivity, Starbucks is saying, hey, we'll pay you to be featured in there. That's the power of an advertorial. Even our good friends at the New York Times are getting in on the advertorial game over here. And this time it's sponsored by Netflix. But look carefully. The article is about women's jail. And what do you know? The show Orange and Black made by Netflix is sponsoring it. And in the article, they mention the show. As you can see, the advertorial is a clever way for sponsors to get their products in front of audiences in a different way. Now, advertorials are really nothing new. They've been around for quite a while. The devious and great advertising mind of David Ogilvy was doing advertorial style content a long time ago. He knew that if a consumer saw an ad that benefited them, they would pay special attention and even rip it out of a magazine to save it. For example, he made this Rinso detergent ad that did better than any other detergent ad ever because it was so easy for homemakers to tear out of the magazine and keep in their laundry rooms as a reference guide. Another example of this that David Ogilvy wrote as the head of his own agency was this one for Guinness. Not only was it an advertisement for Guinness beer, but people used to tear it out of the magazine and keep it. Restaurants would even display this ad so their patrons could help pair oysters together. By giving out great information in the ad, David Ogilvy was able to make it way more effective. See how being useful makes the content go so much further? Modern day advertorial writers can learn a thing or two from the master himself. So could me and you make an advertorial together right now? Well, let's try. Let's say we're gonna use our model, Donnie the dog, and try to get him to sell Purina puppy chow. Now, if you're just trying to promote this on the web, you can make a regular old ad that you'd pay for on a website. Nothing special, no content. Just whip up a standard ad like this that says Donnie loves Purina puppy chow and put a buy button on it. Now, this can work by getting people to buy something right away, but generally this will have a very low conversion rate unless the article someone is reading is directly along the lines of what's the best dog food or something similar. So how else could we promote Purina without just a regular advertisement? Well, there's a couple ways. Let's say we were trying to get in the Wall Street Journal and promote Purina. Well, if there was an article said that Purina was named the number one brand and the Purina stock grows, that's still getting the Purina name out there and getting people to buy the product, even though it's about the stock, not the product. A more fun content piece that subtly promotes Purina would look something like this. This could be something like a viral BuzzFeed article that provides some laughs and simultaneously gets the brand exposure. So it would say 21 dogs that have been working out way too hard. And then Donnie the dog would be saying, got to get my protein, bro. It'd be a funny ad. It'd be a little bit more lighthearted than a typical ad. And it would still get a bunch of exposure. Now, in terms of sheer exposure, these types of posts go a long way, especially on social media, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, etc. Not only is the article innocently promoting a brand, but it's also providing some cuteness and fun for the internet. These types of sponsorships have been increasing massively because the social engagement is through the roof. A silly listicle style article like this can generate millions of views and tens of thousands of social shares. So in conclusion, with an advertorial, you get to borrow the credibility of a website, a magazine, or a newspaper you're publishing in. In fact, advertorials are actually kind of sneaky, which is why they stir up some controversy in the journalism community, because the bulk of people associate the thing being in a credible publication 
as automatically being credible. So they're looking at a Guinness ad in the Wall Street Journal and they're thinking, it's in the Wall Street Journal, so it must be legit. So for this reason, advertisers love advertorials because they automatically seem credible by subtly being integrated with normal content. So remember, if you're gonna make an effective advertorial, put out 70% good content, 30% promotional content, and combine it together, and you will have made a great advertorial. If you'd like to learn more about how to use good principles of copywriting to promote or advertise your business, check out copywritingcourse.com and check out our other videos. And we'll help guide you along the way with fun instructions, great templates, and examples from around the internet. Hope you enjoyed watching and talk to you soon.